Hello from the Forstronics YouTube channel and welcome to networking NRF24 transceivers. So in this video we're going to look at how to network more than two NRF24 transceivers. Now when I do this video I'm going to assume that you have a basic understanding of the NRF24s and some experience with them and with their Arduino library. If you're brand new to the NRF24 I recommend first checking out my getting started with the N. RF24 transceivers and then coming back to this video. Let's get started. So the NRF24s have a built-in capability they call Nordic calls multi-sieber. And what this does is it allows you to set up six transmitters and one receiver. And so what's special about this? Because you could do this in code if you wanted to. Well what's special is they make it easy because the the connections are managed in hardware. So you're not having to disconnect, reconnect, open a pipe, switch to a different pipe. It allows you to basically set up six reading pipes for the receiver and read from or get data from six different transmitters. And I guess their goal here, Nordic's goal here, was to make it easy for people to set up wireless networks. So you can think of, of the transmitters being where the sensors are, reading the data, and then sending the data to the receiver, which would be whatever storing the data or displaying the data. But the bad thing about this setup is it's really only made for one-way communication. You sort of have to change the pipes around and set up a writing pipe to do two-way communication. One thing I'm going to show in an example coming up is I'll show how to set up this multi-sieber. But I also want to show, okay, you're in this multi-sieber mode, but what if you want to do two-way communication? How do you do that? And so multi-sieber is great if you're fine with the transmitters and, and the one receiver, but what if you want to do other stuff? And what I hope to show you in this video is to show a simple sketch that you can leverage to build some more complex network communication using the NRF24, and also so you can understand its, its limitations. So here is my setup. So I wanted to do three different modules. And once again, I'm going to show the multi-sieber capability as well as sort of the, going a little beyond with the two-way communication. So I needed three Arduinos. Well, I guess I didn't have to have three Arduinos, but I had three Arduinos, so I used three Arduinos. So I have the Uno, the Mini, as well as the Duo. Now, you don't need to have these three Arduinos to do this. I'm just kind of showing my setup as I had three Arduinos set up. Two are going to serve as quote-unquote transmitters, although I'll do two-way communication. And one, actually the Uno board, is going to be the receiver for the multi receiver setup. Okay, let's take a look at the code. Now we're looking at the code for the receiver unit. And what I'm going to do in this example is just a, meant to be simple, but the receiver is going to generate a number, a random number. It's going to come up with a number and the transmitters are going to send guesses. So they're going to try and guess what that number is. So at first we're just using the multi receiver capability. The transmitters are just sending data to the receiver. Then once one of the transmitters guesses right, the receiver is then going to switch from reading to writing and transmit to the transmit unit. I hope that doesn't sound confusing. To let it know that it got the right number, then that transmit unit is going to stop. I call up the libraries. Here's the version I'm using for this example. I set up my, my pins. This variable is going to hold the, the number that the receiver generates that the transmitters are trying to guess. Here's my object call. And then I need to set up four different pipe addresses. Two for the reading pipes, and that's that's the pipes we're gonna be receiving data from the transmitters on. And then I'll, I'll need two different pipes to write to those transmitters when they guess right. Okay, here in my setup code, you can see I'm, I'm gonna generate a random seed. Then I basically create a random integer between zero and 10. And that's what the transmitters are gonna try and guess. I then start my serial communication. I print out what the number is. I then do my NRF24 calls. And once again, I'm going to set up, I'm in the multi-sieber mode. I'm going to use the multi-sieber capability. So I'm going to open up two reading pipes, one and two. And then I'm going to start listening because I'm acting as a receiver. So I'm going to start listening. So here in my main loop, I'm going to set up a variable to read what pipe is communicating so I know which transmitter is communicating with me and then I'm going to use this variable to store the data. So here I check if there's data available. If there is, I grab the pipe number so I know who it's from. 
I then grab the data itself, and I'm just reading one byte of data. If you want to see an example with, with multi reading larger amounts of data, check out the getting started with the NRF24 video. I then just print out what transmitter sent the data, what they guessed, and then I'm going to check if their guess was right. And then I'm going to call this function right here, which I'll get to, if they were right. And, and that function is basically going to set up my writing pipe. So here is the function. I'm going to read in which pipe was communicating to me or what transmitter was communicating with me. I then set up a true or false variable. I have to stop listening. So I'm in receive mode. I'm listening. I need to stop listening. I then I'm going to open up a writing pipe. And that's why I'm using this, this identifier as an input argument to know which transmitter is communicating with me. Now I have to use a different pipe address, set up an all new pipe to write to them. So at this moment, when I stop listening, if the other transmitter were to send me data, I wouldn't get it at this exact moment. So, so when you're setting this up, you have to make sure that your setup is robust enough where to understand that there might be times when you have this network set up that, that you might miss data from one just because you can't have this parallel communication going on. So I'm going to open my writing pipe. I mentioned that I'm going to write, check to see if it was successful. And basically all I'm writing is the number to, to show, okay, you got it right. Here's, here's the number. If it works, if my write is, is successful, I'll, I'll return true from this function. And once again, this function's up here. I'll say correct. That transmitter is done. That transmitter is going to get this, this reply and know that it's done and stop transmitting. So let's take a look at one of the transmitter sketches. So here's the transmitter. A lot of the same setup, except this time I only need to set up two pipes. The pipe I'm going to write data to the receiver on, and that's the reading pipe for the receiver. And then the pipe that I can read data from from the receiver if I send the right guess. Here's my setup code. I set up my, my serial. I do a seed for my, my random number generator. I begin my NRF24 communication. I set up my write pipe. I also set up my reading pipe now. So I can set up the reading pipe here in the setup code. But when I set that up, I have to say that I'm not listening. So I'm not in receiving mode. I just have my receiving pipe already set up. So I get my random number that I'm going to use to guess, try and guess what it is. I write it. I check to see if it, the write was successful. If it was, I just print out what I just sent. I then go into listening mode or receive mode. So I send a number. I have no idea if it's the right number or not. So I start listening. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up a timer here. And I'm, I don't want to use the delay function for my timer, the Arduino delay function, because doesn't allow the delay function is just going to stop things. So I'm going to set up a timer to monitor this while there's nothing available. And while we haven't timed out, I'm just going to wait. Now, if, if data becomes available, then I'm going to read it right away. But if I time out, then I know that I must not get the right guess. And I'm going to go back through the loop. Notice I used 200 milliseconds. 200 milliseconds was a nice, comfortable number to not wait too long, but to wait plenty of time in case they are trying to, um, to respond. So if I time out, my last guess was wrong, so I'm going to try again. If I didn't time out and I got data, I want to read that data. I do this check, although I probably don't need to do this, just to make sure that I was right. Uh, and if I did, I, I say that I guessed right and I'm done. And I set my done variable to true, so I will no longer run through the loop. And then I make sure I stop listening. So I started listening up here to receive data, then I want to go back out of receiving mode and, and so I stop listening. Okay, so we looked at the receiving code, we looked at one of the transmitter codes. Let's see this in action looking at the serial monitor. Okay, so what we're looking at is my serial monitor. You can see the receiver just started up, so it printed out the number that, that they're trying to guess. And this one, for this case, it's eight. So I start it, and then in a minute, I'm gonna start receiving some data from the receivers. You can see that I did. And one of the receivers guessed right after a while. So you can see, I shouldn't say receivers, I mean transmitters. You can see my transmitters that are coming in, transmitter two and one. And you can see the number they're guessing, and we can see that they fail and they're trying again. So we're going through this, they're guessing different numbers, 
And then finally, transmitter one gets it right. So transmitter one's done. So we'll stop hearing from that. So we were in the multi-sieber mode. The receiver's just listening. And transmitters are transmitting, and I had a delay set for about a, a second. So they're just sending data. Then they listen to, to see if they got it right, because if they hear back, they know they got it right. If not, they just continue sending. So finally, one of them got it right. So that one's going to drop off. That one's not going to do anything else. And the other one's going to keep going. And I think for this example, it actually takes transmitter two a, a while to get it. Uh, so it's running. It's still sending. Still sending. Still sending. And I think in a couple or so seconds, it's going to get it. And there it goes. It finally got it. So we saw in the example, we were com communicating with three different modules. We were first using the multi-sieber mode where we can just keep getting data that's managed in hardware for multiple units. But if we want to do the two-way communication and we sort of want to drop out of the multi-sieber capability, then we can do that. We just have to manage the connections in software or in the Arduino code, I should say, or, or with the microcontroller. If you want to get the code from this example, go to my blog. If you like what you saw, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. If you have any questions, you can email me or you can leave a comment on my YouTube channel videos. I'm fairly quick to answer. If you have any future suggestions for projects or tutorials, let me know. Thank you for watching.